Welcome to Buildings of Tomorrow. In this episode, we'll be talking about BIM and the different databases which are used throughout the process. I'm joined today in the studio by Wolfgang Huss, a member of the Strategic Advisory Council at Building Smart International. Wolfgang, thank Hello. you for joining us. Please give us an insight on the different databases which are involved during the BIM process. Yeah, most known, I think, is the uh, database where the products are stored or the uh, information about the products is stored. And uh, this product database, yeah, that's uh, what suppliers should support with their data because it's absolutely mandatory to have the right products built in, not black boxes, which have to be replaced later on. And therefore we have, uh, meanwhile, uh, standards uh, produced, defined by uh, Building Smart International. Uh, the name is IFC, Industrial Foundation Classes. But there are also some company standards uh, driven by the cut uh, drawing software manufacturers. And uh, you know, just because one uh, or some are a little bit bigger and their market share is high, uh, they brought it into the market. And so their standards are quite familiar in, the, in our industry. Um, but that's not the only database we have, and there's another one we sh should really work on, and that's the project database. That's the database which belongs to the building. It's representing the virtual twin of the building. And for this database, we need a structure, a definition, how this database should look like. Okay, so today we have the product database, right. and at which stage of the process is this developed or, or completed? Uh, the uh, there are lots of products already available in these standards and uh, so we can, or the designer can really work with these product databases uh, today. Uh, there is still a discussion which attributes are really belonging to the database, which not, but these discussion we will have the next years and uh, it's, it's not finished. Uh, but the base is the right one and we can add quite easily other attributes when the pro ob object itself is built in. So I, say, uh, I would say we are on a good track there with a product database. It's not ready because there is a translation also necessary because in the countries of Shure, they, are, uh, they have differing expressions for different uh, types of data. So uh, it's a translation issue. So we need dictionaries. Therefore, Building Smart is also working on these. The, Sub, so the title therefore is Building Smart uh, Data Dictionary. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, I would say, on a, a good track. But now we have to add also dynamic and functional data to these product uh, information. And um, that's still part of the product database. On the other hand, we need this project database because this is done or we are using today the databases from the CUT systems and they are really not prepared for this big amount of data. We are slowing down these programs and uh, they can't handle all these fields and, and so on. That's maybe we should make a split of the database from the drawing systems, from the cut systems. So it has to run independently and that would be my big wish, um, company independent. So defined by a neutral organization. Okay, so it makes sense that uh, the drawing tool is not, does not also hold all of the information. Yeah. So this is how it should be, correct? Yeah. That we look to in the future. And let's say the drawings and the 3D pictures, yeah, that's just one part of the complete building. There are so many data behind and they have to be organized. And um, it's very important to have, let's say, one structure behind that everything is a little bit linked to each other here. Yeah? So the data, they have to be harmonized, they have to be, they, they have to fit together. And then it makes sense, then it's a real value. Then it's real. So is it fair to say that the product database is the collection of all the components in the building, but this project database is how they all work together? Exactly. And the product database is, let's say, the source where you can pick products and you can place it in your building, in the virtual building. Mm -hmm. And then later on, it has to build according to plans, for sure. But then you have all the information about these products also in your virtual model. So you know, for example, when the belt has to be changed because it's part of the description of the product. On the other hand, you also will have the runtime of this fan so you know when the fan or the belt of the fan has to be changed. So that's fitting for the facility management very good together. 
There's so there's a relation between these data. And this is a huge relationship to understand the lifetime of the, mm. of the product, which would be built into the product data, yeah. but then how long it's been running, which yeah. would be part of the project. And we can do this uh, just the same today, but there's a lot of manual work and interpretation necessary, and we can automate this if the structure is standardized. Okay. And who has the responsibility to define what these databases should look like? Yeah, the responsibility is it's uh, on one hand, the input is coming from the vendors, from the different one, mm -hmm. because they can offer something. But let's say the uh, wish list should come from the operators. Okay. And we can hopefully convince them as supplier with the right data. But uh, we are not producing data if nobody needs data. Yeah, so there has to be a request from somewhere. And uh, I would say most of the data will be used uh, during the construction and operational time. And uh, so there is a real value for them. But there is another problem in our two days process. The influence of those who are doing the operation of facility management, the influence for the, in the planning phase is minor. Yeah. Yeah? In many cases, they are not known. And so we have to change a little bit our mind here yeah, just to have an ear what they really want. And maybe a small investment in the beginning will save a lot of money later on in the operational cost here. Yeah. But there is again, it's, it's, we have to rethink the financial model because the investment is higher, but the savings are huge. Yeah. But it's a different pocket. So the, the owner or the operator at some point has to provide more information on yeah. what they would like to do in the future. Yeah, they would love to have them. Yeah, absolutely. But usually they are not heard. The way things are today, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. And thank you all for joining us at Buildings of Tomorrow. Please feel free to comment, like, or share this episode, or subscribe to us here on this channel. We look forward to seeing you again soon.